Okay, hello. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Just make sure everyone can hear me before we get started with today. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're ready to learn some Python. So that's uh, today's overall plan. Um, I'm going to go over a bit of a few things, actually, and then we're going to get started. So um, if you did not know, uh, I've done a lot of introduction to Python stream, but uh, this is the first one we're doing as a multi-track uh, Python stream. So we're going to have multiple tracks, and then we want to get to the point where we'll be able to build a simple uh, text-based game in Python. And it's uh, we're going to go over a lot of computer science basics. So if you're pretty, not, if you're not new to computer science or not new to Python. Even uh, there might be some stuff you already know, and the probably is a lot of stuff you already know, which is perfectly fine. You should totally uh, stick around and help uh, anyone else. We're adding additional value or any thoughts you might have as we go along and on this learning journey. Quick water sip break, but yeah, but uh, let's get started. Um, welcome everyone who's coming in the chat. Uh, before we get too far, I do need to make sure everyone who is here is checked in, so we can make sure we can keep track of thing and provide you rewards uh, for, for being here with us today. So uh, make sure you check in uh, at not that link. Uh, I should have made a shortcut, but that's okay. We're just going to stick with our basic. Make sure you check in. Um, and then it, for all my Python pros, again, I would say that it might not be the most exciting for you, but you should definitely stick around, enjoy the atmosphere, and go from there. Actually, talking about atmosphere, what's also really important for it is our music. Um, so I'm going to lower that volume and kick that back up for you guys. So we're going to try a new song. Let's see how this goes. Um, I got this one. We do have a few songs in here. I wish it was a bigger selection, but unfortunately it's not. So we'll deal with what we can. With that being said, our first thing is we got some nice slides. Uh, so, hey, I'm Kev. So I'm a coach here at Major Glee Hacking. I use the he, him, his pronouns, and I do a lot of different things. So... Honestly, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to drop in the chat and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. If you have not checked in yet, please make sure you check in. Uh, but yeah, so ask me anything in chat and from there, let's get started. Oh, uh, so that's the wrong schedule overview. I actually need to update that in my slides. But the general overview for today is we're gonna be setting up Replit. We're gonna get some, get some basic understanding of Python, what it is, some of the data types in Python, and I've actually shifted some stuff around as I'm building this for a more three stream track and allowed us to get to our endpoint. Uh, we will no longer be doing print statements today. We'll be doing operators. Um, and, things, things, and things such as variables and expression. Um, this is a pretty hands-on follow-along lecture style. Um, so hopefully leaving today's stream, you would have an understanding of not only Python, but the key concepts that allowed you to get started with any computer science um, or any programming language or any computer science journey you might have. Um, so if again, if you are taking computer science or are not new to some of these concepts, that's perfectly fine. Feel free to stick around and chat and um, yeah, do some chatting, ask me anything. But let's get actually started. So first things first, we're gonna get set up with a replet. If you do not know what replet is, replet is uh, a really simple tool, online sandbox that's that's like an online IDE. And if you don't know what IDE is, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment which allows you to pack a lot of tools you might use during development into one single place and makes it really easy to use. So I'm going to drop the link for Replit. If you don't have a Replit account, please go to that link and make yourself a Replit account. And with that, I'm going to pop it over to our Replit stream. So this is my Replit. Um, I have not have anything in this Replit. Uh, so this is the interface for Replit. You can see that to how to get started if you're we're trying to let it has all that information. Let me see if I can build the uh, let's keep Ooh. okay. Uh wait, oh okay, so my camera lost connection for a second. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but first, uh, make sure you have the replit set up, and then I will get my camera going shortly. 
So once you have a Replit account, you can see that Replit has a lot of different tools and features already built in for you. I think that's a bit too big. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new Replit uh, that allows you to basically work in Python from anywhere you are at, and you, there's no need for you to actually uh, do the whole installing uh, of like an interpreter or doing the setup for your development. And that can be all be done after you have learned a bit of Python and decide maybe this is the language you want to continue to use or you want to use throughout your development cycle. Let's see. As that it has been said, um, okay. Hey, let's get going. So first thing first we're gonna do is you can see on top there's something called create a repel. We're gonna click on create a repel and then we're gonna select Python as our replits language. After that is done, you can name it anything you want. I'm gonna name it Global Hack Week. And then we're gonna name it, uh, let's see, what do we wanna call it? Uh, Global Hack Week. Python, P-Y-T-H-O-N, track. Uh, I'm gonna put a new name, global hockey game. And this is in May. Or actually, it probably make more sense if I do it like global hack week May and we're doing a game theme. Uh, I'm gonna give me one second. I'll be right back and I'm gonna set up my camera. Uh, again, uh, as I'm doing that, please go ahead and create your own replit. Once you're done with this, just hit create replit. It will then take you into the replit. As you see, this is loading. And now that's all done loading. It will give you a pre door to the workspace. I'll be right back. Let me try to fix my camera. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're back with a camera. Actually, that's a poor placement. Maybe I will make a modification for that. That legit blocks me if I put something on stream. So welcome to the workspace. Workspace, essentially, this is looks like ID if you have used any other type of integrated development environment. We're going to hit next. This is your code editor. Essentially, this is where you write your code. Um, they also do have built-in suggestions. So if you want to ever work with that, um, this is the run button. If you click on this, it'll run everything that is in the file you're on. So we're going to hit next. Here's the output. Uh, this allows you to, this is whatever you hit, after you hit run, this is what your uh, program might output to the console. Your sidebar is just where your files are and other tools you might have or want to use. And you can always invite collaborators and so on and so forth. So that's a quick uh, overview of Plit. We're not going to actually use uh, Ghostwriter, so uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, today, we're actually going to be mostly looking at the shell. And the shell, afterwards, we're going to go over a few things, but after you make an account in the shell, we're actually going to be running a Python interpreter, uh, which will actually go over what it is in the bit when we get back to the slides. But I want to make sure everyone gets to around this stage. So as we toggle back and forth, you're able to uh, try out some of the things we discussed together um, on your own as well. Uh, so I'm going to first do this. So whenever you're ready, uh, just run Python 3. And then we really just need the shell as our main screen. So I'm actually going to close out Python uh, main.py and we're going to work really mostly in the shell today. And for that, I'm actually going to make this a bit bigger. Uh, there we go. So yes, you can now see the shell. So with Replit being set up, we're going to head back over to our slides for the day. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to ask. Uh, but welcome back to our slides for the day. Uh, so our next thing after that is set up, we're going to go over what is Python. Uh, so Python is a high level general purpose language, which essentially means that um, it can be used for a lot of different things. And high level means it's generally a more simpler and easier language. Um, there's a lot a lot of the finite details of programming or coding has already been taken care of for you. Uh, such things, if you are not new to computer science, it's just like garbage collection, uh, memory management, all that, all that type of stuff has been already abstracted uh, from the language and it's really easy for someone to get started. It's general purpose because we use that in a lot of different things. Hey Zell Foster, how's it going? I'll come back to another Python stream with Kev. Uh, but yeah, so fun fact, I, I think you just popped in here. Uh, we're going to be doing a three-parter, so hopefully this time I actually get all the slides made and it's going to be really nice and fancy. Uh, it can be used for seeing if you're ever interested, such as web development, scientific computing, uh, data analysis, and artificial intelligence. There is a lot of tools. We're actually going to go over that um, really shortly. It was released in 1991 uh, by said person. I cannot pronounce their name, so I'm not going to butcher it. Um, 
that this actually was a fact that uh, a fellow uh a fellow hacker uh or a fellow mlher in chat um one of you audience members actually uh told me so i've included that into my slides now so uh, yeah it was released in 1991 so it's fairly new python is what around at this point 30 ish years old um, it's a really new language, uh, but because of it being a high level and general purpose language, it actually has a huge application range. It is simply the use and it, uh, it is simple and it's easy to use. So it's a great language for beginners. That's why we're going to get started with that. And uh, it has actually a lot of different um, things you can get involved. Uh, we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, it is clear and concise syntax, so it's easy for someone to understand and it allow easy reading. So if you ever, let's say, inherit code or someone gives you a Python file, it's almost like if you're reading natural English and you, it's really easy to follow along. So with that being said, type of language, what type of language is Python? Python is what we call an interpreter language, which means the code is executed line by line rather than it being compiled into machine code all at once. Um, how this works is um, you have something, a, code, a coded application called interpreter, which will then, as you enter things, it will then interpret what you've entered directly and then perform the action. Uh, unlike, so Python is an example of interpreter languages. There are other interpreter languages out there. Um, there's also compile languages, which we kind of mentioned, where essentially you take all the code you have at once, compile down a machine code, and then run it all at once. And a version, an example of compile language would be such things as C++, C, um, and even Java. Uh, so Python, because it's an interpreter language, it's generally easier to write and, and to test your code quickly, uh, since you, all you have to do is write your code and your interpreter will directly interpret your code. You don't have to keep everything together and then compile at once. Thank you. Thank you, Zell Foster. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day as well. Uh, stay safe. Um, thanks you for stopping by. Um, so what makes Python really great? It has a large standard library. What is a standard library? A standard library essentially is the default tools that ship with Python. So you have things that in the standard library that allows you to work with, let's say, files, allows you to do processing for data, allows you to interact with the web. And on top of that, because Python is such general purpose, there has been a lot of libraries written for Python. So there's a many third-party libraries available for Python that allows you to plot things, that allows you to work with AI, that allows you to do uh, data science and so on and so forth. This is the type of language Python is and makes it really powerful and really good language to actually get started. Um, it is probably one of the most used application of languages. Uh, given the fact that if you ever take an AI course, it's probably going to be done Python. A lot of adapter-based programs, such as, let's say, maybe a program that works with uh, a SQL or a database, are generally done in Python. Um, you see Python in data science or data visualization. Um, it's just one of the most super easily to use languages, especially with huge collection of data. But yeah, so we're going to go into some Python basics. Uh, the first topic we're going to talk about tonight is going to be called data types. Quick sip of water. Let's keep going. So what is a data type? A data type is a classification of data that is generally used in programming. In Python, um, there are many different types of uh, data in Python. Uh, so it determines essentially the type of operation that can be performed within that data type, uh, how the data is stored in memory. And memory is essentially just where the data is stored. It's like your brain, you hold memories in your brain, and the medium to store it is your brain, right? Your brain stores memories. For Python or for a computer, it's things such as hard drives. That's one of the most easier ways uh, to understand it, right? So hard drives are broken into such things as solid state, uh, solid state drives. You have things such as M.2s, we're also, you know, we have hard disk drive, which is just general where hard drive as a terminology comes from. And it allows you to, in each data determines, each data type helps determine, let's say, the format it's stored, the range of the values that can be stored, as well as maybe the size of the values. Um, so for example, if I tell uh, myself, if I was using me as an example in my brain, for example, maybe I only want to store uh, food as what I ate. I don't want to store anything more else. And the data type allows me to determine how it's stored, the, uh, the range of values that is allowed to be stored, and maybe how big I want it to use up on my computer. Uh, it, it also has uh, different built-in data types, uh, which we'll go over in a second, actually. It also, Python allows, but not all languages, but uh, 
Python allows the creation of custom data types. Some languages do, some languages don't. I'm, but Python being a general purpose language does. Uh, it's also important uh, to pick the proper data types. If you're coding a language, we're gonna go over in a bit how Python works with data types uh, because it, imp it impacts your ability to write uh, correct and efficient code. We'll explore that more as we actually go into the different type of data types. And it also helps avoid generally uh, type of errors um, such that can be caused by, let's say when I do an operation that's specific to a data type, that doesn't work with another type of data. Okay, so quick, uh, we're gonna really go over every one of these and then we're gonna start seeing them in some examples. And then later we're gonna start utilizing them in actual, uh, in actual usage. So first things first is numbers, right? Numbers are your common thing in life. Everything around us is just numbers. It can always be representative in a way by numbers. So there are three type of number data types in Python. We have ones called integers. Integers are your whole numbers. So that means your positive and negatives whole numbers, and, and they have no fractional parts. So example, right, we have negative one, five, 535, negative thousand, uh, negative 2,445 and zero. All those are whole numbers. They're either, they can be positive or negative, but you can see that none of them have a fractional component. If you don't know what a fractional component is, a fractional component is just a component um, or just things such as decimals. Um, those are really easy to identify and use. The next thing we have is floats. Uh, floats are also known as floating point numbers, are essentially numbers with fractional components. It's the, everything that essentially uh, integers don't cover, right? So we built upon that. So for example, I listed pi, uh, 3.1415926535. Five eight nine seven nine three. That's a float, right? We have the whole number, which is three, which by itself is considered integer, added to a fractional component, which is the point one four one five nine two six five three five eight nine seven nine three. That's a mouthful. Um, I wonder if you in the chat want to share how much num digit of pi you have memorized, because I know a lot of schools generally like to make you memorize digits of pi. And uh, in uh, floating, uh, floating point numbers, also floats, can also go in both directions. It can be positive and negative. For example, a negative float would be negative 3.45234. Uh, so like integers, floating points can go in both positive and negative directions. And you can see zero would not be considered as a float, given that there's no fraction of component of zero. Uh, after that, we have such things as complex numbers, yes. Um, these do exist in Python and does exist in many other programming languages. Um, you can count that as a fortunate or unfortunate thing based on how much you like math. Um, if you've done anything in algebra, you have been introduced generally, if you've taken a course or done much any of algebra, you should have been introduced to the idea of imaginary numbers. So complex numbers are essentially numbers uh, with a real part and an imaginary part. So for example, negative one i or two plus five i. We're actually gonna go over how they actually work in Python a bit, uh, but that is the general understanding of um, numbers in Python, right? As a data type, you have things such as integers, floats, and complex numbers. Uh, actually, before we continue, I just wanna to, to chat. If you wanna stop me at any moment, feel free to drop a comment in the chat. We'll address any questions or concerns you might have, and we're gonna go pretty slowly. Um, yeah. Everyone, so everyone can follow along. And to be honest, there are a lot of this are finite things. So even if you've programmed before, you might not fully understand the exact finite details of each of these concepts. Quick water break. That's a lot of talking. Okay, cool. So the next thing we're gonna move over. So, okay, after numbers, what, right? What is the most common thing um, in life? Uh, one of the few most common things in life are known as strings. Well, not to us really, but strings are essentially allows for sequence of characters. Uh, and characters are essentially any alpha, uh, alpha numeric things such as numbers and, and uh, number and letters. Uh, letters and numbers can be part of as well as other characters that might be special, dollars, um, special characters, right? Uh, ampersand, an exclamation point, and so on and so forth. Um, if I'm lagging a bit, feel free to let me know. I might lag a tad bit because of the stream. And also, that reminds me, let's uh, change the music. We've been probably on the same song for a while. Okay, we, I just swapped to a new song. I think it does this new like fade in and fade out thing. Like, I think it's 
Uh, so for example, in strings in Python, we generally include in either a single quote or double quote. It's like when you're writing a paper and you're quoting an author, um, we can use either single quote or double quote. And there are certain cases you might want to use one of the other. We'll go more in depth of that when we're starting to use and test data types. Uh, so example of a string, for example, as you can see, we have hello world, which I have enclosed in a double quotes. That would be considered a string. We also have what's up, which is enclosed in single quotes. Uh, hello world is technically a string uh, consisting of characters, right? Because we talked about how strings are just sequence of characters. So it's technically just a, a, a string that has H by itself as a character, E by itself as a character, L, L, O, W, O, R, L, D, each as an individual character that makes up the whole entire string as string. A uh, character are a type of data type, but not in Python. Um, Python, we generally just work with strings, and each if you want to represent each of the characters, they will still be represented as a string version of those characters. With that being said, we're going to move on to our one of our best buddies in this, which is called Booleans. So what are Booleans? Booleans is just um, the representation of one or of two values, which are just true or false. And this is generally used to express logical values. So it also can affect things that just control flow of the program uh, based on conditions. Um, we're going to talk more into that about, about that later. And that is things such as conditional loops, conditional jumps, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, they are generally essential for decision making and logic operations in your program, right? So when you need to consider things or actually use logic, for example, uh, what is a car, right? A car is by definition, if if it has four wheels, a frame, a seat, a, a way to travel, that's a car, right? Um, so it, those are examples of Boolean and how conditional values would work. Uh, it also is essential for, let's say, decision making, um, which it would be example would be, let's say, um, if I provide information to, let's say, a program, we're saying like, my name is Kevin, um, and the condition to be if, uh, Kevin is the person who's talking to me, I want to do next. If Kevin is not the person who's talking to me, I want to do something else. Uh, and then it also can be used with combinations such as with logical operators, which will be go for either this stream or we're going to go for in the following stream. Uh, so example of this is the actual value itself. So there are such things called keywords in programming languages. Those are words that are are designated and they're already taken for specific purposes. Um, such in Python, such things as like true or false, those are reserved. Well, that's a better word there. So those are generally reserved for uh, specific purposes in Python to get Boolean true or Boolean false, but to identify the representation true or false, you could just use a capital T-R-U-E or, or capital F-A-L-S-E. And those are your Boolean reserved word for true and false. But that being said, that's not the only way we can evaluate Booleans. The idea of true or false carry actually across all the different data types in Python, right? So looking at Boolean consideration for maybe uh, the other data types we have looked at, for example, strings, if a string is not empty, meaning it has characters uh, in it, or it has sequences of characters, we consider that as true. Uh, for example, if a string is empty with just quotes, we consider that as false. And then for integers, uh, it would be if it's any value that's not zero, we consider that as true. That means it's a real value when it's there. If it's a value is zero, we consider that as false for Boolean. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is lists. Um, so if you list is a more complex version of a data type, and uh, it generally exists as some in some languages as a data structure, and uh, it is a commonly used data structure. So list allows you to store a collection of elements, um, an element being any of the other data types we've really gone over, and even data types of custom types or custom objects. So it is commonly a uh, commonly used data structure, like I said already, and it can be used to store any type of object. Uh, lists are ordered, which means elements in the list have a specific order they are placed in, and it has to be access to the index, which will going to be discussed later in this course, we're in this workshop, or three-part track, um, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, so to access by the index, it will start at zero. So for example, um, uh, it will start at zero as your first index of the first element. And then the lists are mutable, meet, which essentially just means that you can add, you can add, modify, and you can delete, remove from the list after it's been created. So a uh, list in Python uses square bracket as its uh, designator, um, and it separates each element with commas. 
So for example, you can see that in that list I gave an example, we have one, two, three, which if you know from what we talked about, those are our types called integers, right? So we have integers uh, in index one, we have integer in index two, we have integer in index three. I actually wonder if you can see my mouse. No, that's really unfortunate. I was hoping I can hover over this and you can see my mouse. That's fine. Um, so uh, index zero would be where one is at. Index two, I mean, index one would be where two is at. Index three, I mean, index two is where three is at. So uh, I don't know why. Uh, this is a decision that computer scientists or anyone who got CS decided to make a long time ago. In computer science, our indexes where our counting starts at zero. We don't start at one, which means uh, you essentially, when, because it's an ordered uh, pair, uh, order structure of elements, uh, you start at zero and you count to the number of elements. Uh, and from there, you can add, that's where the index of that element is, right? So one, the number one is always going to be stored at index zero uh, for this list. So unless you remove it and then re add it in, but you can see that we the list allows you to store all sort of objects, including our the already defined data types, such as integers, uh, string, booleans, and go back to integers. So we can mix and match in the list. It makes a really powerful way to store data. The next thing is really similar to a list with a key difference being that list, what we talk about is mutable. Uh, next thing we have is called tuples. Tuples are ordered immutable sequences of elements. Meaning once they're created, they're not allowed to change them anymore. So they're generally enclosed in parentheses, unlike lists who are enclosed in brackets. Um, tuples are enclosed in parentheses. And they are allowed to be, they're used to store generally combinations of objects um, that we do not want to be allowed to be modified or deleted. So for example, we might make a tuple uh, of a thing. What's a good example? For example, when I make a tuple that, that, um, that, that, uh, ooh, I'm English is not working right now. It's okay. We might, uh, we might make a tuple that represent, that was the word. We may make a tuple that represents uh, maybe you as a person, right? So some things that we don't want to make sure you can never change. For example, maybe um, in rare cases you do, but in our example, we're going to say never changes, right? We might associate your name uh, or uh, I, uh, with unique identifiers such as social security number uh, to maybe your name, uh, your last name, right? And we don't want them to disassociate or dis, uh, dis, uh, disconnect to each other. Um, it's probably a poor example, but essentially uh, the, the whole idea here with my poor example <laughs> is that it generally is used to represent collection of related values that should not be modified once they're determined. Uh, in our example, we, and tuples can also have any type of objects as well, right? So we have our integer number type, data type. We have strings in that tuple as well as a float in that tuple. Uh, it's really useful and really good to have. Okay, from there, we're actually going to move on to our next topic which is set. Um, set is generally a, uh, a thing not that many people understand. I also don't want to get super in depth because set can get a bit more complex. I'm going to go over what it is as a basic data uh, type. I won't go too much in depth. So for a set is an unordered collection of unique elements uh, defined using curly braces uh, or the function set. Functions, we'll learn more what those are in the later, um, but uh, for example, I just created a set. I put one, two, three, four, five, and that means it's, it's unordered and it is unique. So you cannot have two ones in a set. You are allowed to have two ones in a list. And in a set, you're also not allowed. Um, they're also unordered. So uh, there's no ordering for how set works. Unlike a list, how index, it's, it's being ordered by the index. Okay, so there's a lot more useful data type. We have what we call dictionaries. Uh, dictionaries are generally unordered collections of key value pairs. The keyword here is key value pairs. In other languages, this might be known as an associative array, a map, or a hash table. Um, in Python, we just call them dictionary. Uh, because if you open a dictionary, right, you have a, a word and it matches to a definition. So it's a key to value pair. The key is your word, your definition is your value. I'm going to go over what values are in a bit. If you don't know what they are, if you do, that's great. Let's see. This is the first global hashing that I'm attending mainly due to Python, but I have a lot of work. I have to go soon. Have a great time. Thank you 404 for even stopping by. I do appreciate that. You're missing the actual full on Python lecture that I did promise. 
Um, but that's fine. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and take care. Um, yeah, we have some of our more common people just stopping by and then abandoning me. I'm definitely not hurt. <laughs> I'm super hurt. Um, but yeah, so uh, dictionaries are really unique given that um, it is what allows you to simply ver reference things. Uh, keys must be unique and immutable, uh, which we talked about immutable. The idea of immutable is that means once it's created, it cannot change, uh, for, such as strings or numbers, right? Once you create that number, it doesn't just, you can't just change it. Uh, you can create a new number to replace it or a new string to replace it, but you can't change it. Um, thanks, 404. Appreciate it. Let's get that trending. And then um, I can just end my streams early and uh, call it a night. But yeah, uh, values on the other hand, well, but keys also has to be unique. Let's uh, make sure we understand that. Um, what that means is you can have two keys in a dictionary and that will be confusing, right? When you think about an actual dictionary, if I open a dictionary and I go to the word, uh, I, I go to the word, let's say apple, right? And the dictionary says apple is a type of fruit, but I, there's another word apple in the dictionary, then you don't know which one is true. And uh, yes, you might say a word might have two different definitions. And that is how the value part comes in is that the key must be unique, right? You wouldn't want li to list apple twice because they're not two different um, objects or two different words. They're one word, they might have multiple definition, which where the values come in, since the values can be any type and it can be mutable or immutable. Meaning, for example, if I were to mimic a dictionary in dictionaries in Python, that's really hard actually. Um, so a, a book dictionary that you can check words in and definitions in the data type with data structure dictionary in Python, what you would do is you would make the key, let's say Apple, and you can associate that with the value with data type, like a list. And that allows you to store multiple definitions because the list allows you to store multiple data points. Um, but yeah, so dictionaries are key value pairs and they're generally defined using curly braces. Um, but if you use only curly braces, you're defining a set. Uh, so you would use curly braces to define it with n commas with that separates key value pairs. So for example, you can see we have an example of a dictionary. Uh, this is someone's maybe identity. We have, let's say the key name, which is associated with the value of John, the key age, which is associated with the value 30, the key city, which is associated with the value New York. We will go over how to utilize these things as well as uh, many other things in a few. Uh, but first, we're going to try to understand all of our data types. Uh, oopsie daisy, there we go. So let's hit next slide. So how do we check data types, right? So we're going to go over why this is really important, but let's say we want to know what data type our value is and we really want to understand it. Um, all you got to do is do use the function, which we will define later, but just think of a function as uh, a command, right? You tell it to do something. So I'm saying type and you can pass in the actual data and then Python will tell you what type of data it is. This is really useful in Python and I'll explain why in a bit, uh, but if you ever want to figure out what a type a data is, where a variable is, which we'll also explain a bit, all you got to do is you call the function uh, type and then pass it in uh, the the thing you're concerned, where you want to understand what type it is. So let's get hand on. This is why I had you create a Replit account so you can get quick access to a console. Actually, can I make this go away? Oh yeah, that's amazing. There we go. So now we only have a console. So what we're going to do now is uh, utilize all the type information that we just learned and test out some types, right? So let me throw this over here. Uh, so data types. So for example, if I type in the word type and then do this, I would say uh, file uh, std in and uh, unexpected indentation. Uh, oh, because I did I was I identity? I was okay. But yeah, so if I do type, it goes type is a function uh, and tells you what it why it didn't work, right? So type has to take one or three arguments. We're really Excuse me, we're going to really be interested in type taking only one argument. So we're going to start with, let's say, type again. Oh, uh, lagging a tad bit. Uh, type, and let's say we already discussed this. Um, if someone's in chat, throw in what type of data you think this is. Uh, numbers are a type. Uh, we just got the three type of number. We're going to test them all. So for example, I do type and I do one. It tells you it is in the class called integers. Or just shortcut it to int in Python. Uh, and for example, if I do type, 
And remember, integers are whole numbers that can be both positive and negative. Uh, has no fraction component. Let's do uh, a number of fraction component, which we all know what it is, but let's have the computer tell us, right? We're gonna have five as a whole number with a fraction component of 0.5. Uh, and then as soon as my computer wants to uh, up, hit enter. And as you can see, the type of a whole number with a fraction component is known as a float. And then our next thing, we're gonna go for our next number that we discussed, or a type of number, uh, which is called imaginary numbers. And uh, I know normally if you've taken an integer, uh, the full integer class, if you've taken any algebra class, imaginary numbers are generally represented with i, uh, but i has a lot, other, a lot of other uses in Python, so we're going to represent it with j. So for example, if you for j, and I do type of it, it will say it's a complex number, where a complex number is anything that has real plus imaginary numbers. Um, so yeah, so that's a complex. So we saw how type told us, uh, even though they're all data type of numbers, the specific class that they are, which is integers, flows, and complex. And this works for strings as well. I'm gonna do a quick demonstration, right? So if I do just do quotes, it'll tell you it's string. If I add things in that quote, it still be string. Even if I use numbers, right? Right there, I, even though I use numbers, because it's encapsulated between quotes, it's still considered a string. Uh, and then we're gonna bring that back. And for example, if we just regular strings, it'd still be a string. Another data hub we have is we did talk about this. Remember, strings can be represented by both single quotes as well as double quotes. So we're gonna do some single quotes right there. And then here you can see it still tells a string. If I put numbers in single quotes, it'd still be a string. If I do one number, it'd still be a string. If I do one character, it's still a string. So anything encapsulated with double quotes or single quotes are considered strings. The next thing we talked about uh, after that, wait, that's hilarious. Um, I think I might've actually created two dictionary slides in my slide deck. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, to me, not really to you. <laughs> no. Okay, so the next thing we have, we went over is Boolean, right? So we can use um, these other data types. They have, they have a status or a way of determining each data type of considering the data types value as true or false. But we also have the actual Boolean class. And for Boolean, if I, let's say, just pass it false, which is a, one of the two values Boolean can be, it'll tell you it's a Boolean. If I pass it true, it would still be Julian because those are reserved word for, oh, I can't spell. I do this all the time, cannot spell true versus false. If I do true, you can see type is Boolean. Um, so now we went over some of that. Let's try list, right? So lists are just generated by using two brackets and it can be and be filled with any value. If I do even empty list, if I hit enter, you can see it determines as a list. If I, let's say, put in some values in there, right? So I'm gonna put in integers as well as maybe like some floating point. Oops, that's a mistake on me. I'm gonna put some floating point numbers, also known as floats, and hit enter, it's still a list. Um, as long as you have two brackets, it will be considered a list. And then the other type we've talked about is Let's go uh, with a, a tuple. Anything that's encapsulated in two parentheses is considered a tuple. So here's your example of an empty tuple. We're gonna fill this tuple with values. Oops, I cannot do that because it's gonna say split by commas. It's still a tuple. And then the next thing we have after that, um, as many of you may know, uh, is uh, we done list, we done tuples. We're gonna actually look at sets. So if I just do um, curly braces without using the uh, uh, key, uh, key pair, key value pair notation with commas, I would say, oh, it's still considered a dictionary. Uh, but actually, let me see. That's actually interesting. Wait, can I get this to consider this a set? That, that, yeah, there we go. So as long as you have uh, things in curly braces separated by commas, that's a key thing, it'll be considered a set. Um, also that, uh, and if I do this by key value pairs, right? which you can't use um, numbers, which I think you can actually. You can use numbers. Uh, so for example, uh, number, yeah, there we go. So it's saying that it's supposed to be a dictionary, so it'd be key value pairs. We just can't use numbers because numbers are um, immutable. You cannot redefine what number is. Um, so I can let's say do this, uh, which I, I am showing you a few things here. I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna come over here, throw in my quotes to do this properly. I'm gonna hit enter, right? So that's a class of dictionary, and you saw that in that dictionary, I had, I used numbers as an index, which I can also use, for example, strings, right? So I can use strings, those are, um, once you create them, you can't really change them. You can make a new string, but you cannot change the values of string. So once I hit in that, you can see that uh, we have one as 
And it uh, is a dictionary that just links to uh, a string. We have the string as a key in the dictionary that links to an integer. We have integer uh, that links to a list. So you can see how the in dictionary is really powerful because you can do this mix and matching type of dealio. But yeah, and that's how you would check for data types in Python. Let's go ahead back over to our lecture slides and we're going to continue. Next, we're going to go over uh, also a really, really, really powerful tool. Uh, we're going to call it values, right? Python basic values. So what are values? You might have heard me use that terminology a bit here and there, but now let's define what is a value. So a value Oh, am I lagging? A value is uh, the basic building block of data. So data uh, are, uh, are basic, oh, oh. Uh, values are basic building blocks of data. So you use value to represent. So for example, everything we talked about, such as one, two, three, and when they're used and set as something, those are values. Uh, it can be assigned to variables or passed along as arguments to functions. We'll discuss more about uh, what a variable is, but essentially values are basic block of data that can be assigned to variables or passed on to arguments um, as arguments to functions. Values can take up various forms, such as what we discussed, num number, data type, so like 2, 3.14, 4 plus 3j, such as boolean. Uh, the value for boolean will be true and false, uh, such as strings, right? So like the string hello is a value, uh, such as lists, sets, etc. You can see that on the screen. We went over a lot of this example already, so I'm not going to get too deep, uh, too deep into that. We have then also our fundamentals, right? We have our fundamental elements of Python is what a value are, and they are generally used uh, extremely a lot in data manipulation, control flow, and other aspects. As you can imagine, these are like your core building blocks, right? These are like your cells. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to take a second, stop for a second. Any questions from chat? We've gone over like a good solid 40 minutes of uh, content and lecture material. Everyone following along? How is everyone feeling? Everyone good? And anyone who's bored already? <laughs> I know. I want to make sure uh, this is the good introductory um, to computer science or to programming in general. Okay, so far, anyone here who's new uh, to computer science programming or Python? I'm going to throw this on. So at least one person is okay, right? <laughs> not, no, not lost yet. Good so far. Newish to Python, not to computer science, I assume? No, thank you, thank you for attending. But yeah, um, if you have any question where some things don't make sense, feel free to stop me and I will explain it. Um, yes, C Sharp, interesting. Are you a game developer by chance? Is that why you're here for game week? Because uh, uh, anyone who I know who writes in C Sharp does some sort of Visual Studio code uh, or some, um, what is it? It's not called Visual Studio code. Uh, does some, um, what's it called? Visual Studios or something? No, that's just who is the, uh, is the ID. I'm th what am I thinking of? Uh, does basically does game development. I forgot what I'm thinking of. But yeah, um, I hope we can do some simple Python game later. But Python is a really versatile language, so I'm glad uh, a lot of people here, even though they know other languages, are picking up Python. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Oh, Unity. That's what I was thinking. Unity and Visual Studio. Yes, there you go. Um, you need Visual Studio, really cool stuff. Uh, actually, I, I think there's a point where I tried to learn Unity in Visual Studio. I'd never got too much time to really dive too deep into it, so unfortunate. One more sip of water and let's continue. Uh, so uh, next basic concept we're going to go over is variables. I know a lot of people know what variables are. We talk about this a lot in mathematics and a lot of logic classes and so on and so forth. But a variable is basically a name given to a memory location where the data is stored. Uh, so, excuse me, uh, it, it's a way to refer to a value by the name and they, that and so you can allow it to be used later easily, right? So I can create a variable and I can set it uh, to one. And then later, if I want to use the number or the value one in, throughout my code, I can just 
whatever the variable's name, use that. Uh, we're going to do some example of creating variables in a bit, but before that, uh, let's uh, we don't actually need to declare the type of variables in Python. And this is why I said earlier, you, knowing how to use the actual uh, function called type uh, is really important because uh, in Python, you do not need to declare the type of variables. This Python does something it uh, called uh, dynamic typing, uh, which essentially infers the type um, uh, the type of the variable through the value um, that is being assigned to it. So this allows the signing of different types of value to a single variable because it does dynamic type uh, typing, uh, which is dynamic type language. Uh, so that means the data type of variable is determined at runtime. So whenever it is hold currently holding it is the type of the variable, which is super dangerous. I'm going to so skip over to the negative because it ties in the type. Negative of dynamic typing is no, no, never, you never, actually, I can't spell, or I actually can't English. I meant to say, you never know when, uh, what a type of variable might be. Uh, so when you reuse, let's say, a variable or ch change the data in a variable, you're also just modifying the type. Unlike other languages, if you come from them, if I declare a variable as type integer, I cannot assign a, a, another data type. I cannot assign a list. To it. I cannot assign an array, which is basically a list for a different language. I cannot assign an array to it. I cannot assign strings to it. It has to be integer, which is a type of validation, a type of check that is pretty important, right? For example, if I made a variable called age, I wouldn't want to accidentally uh, assign uh, a list to age, right? Unless I meant to do that. Age are generally represented as an integer, so. I, in another language, you would be able to always keep that true by just saying this variable shit can only store integers, uh, and this represents age. In Python, all you would say is age, and you can really store anything because it's dynamically typed. Uh, so it can change throughout your whole code, which makes it super dangerous. Because, for example, I might have made a variable, and let's call it uh, ID, right? So, and this ID initially, I was using numbers for the ID. So I, I, so it's considered only an integer. So it's, I only use numbers. And then out of nowhere, I decide I want to use strings for ID, right? Cause I want to use characters as well. Uh, like in the middle of your code, your code could have been designed where all the IDs were, were initially integers and you can use all the operations and uh, functionality of integer. And then suddenly out of nowhere, someone can make a mistake and change it to um, string and then it's completely gone. And this is also really important because um, in programming, you often take input uh, from user, right? So if let's say I take input from user and I just directly store that into a variable, whatever the, the user gave me is what I got. Um, and that's why you have to be able to use um, the function type to determine what type of data maybe that was given to you um, and so on and so forth. Uh, we'll go over into input and because we all know that being a problem, input has been a built in with a few safety features, safeguards to prevent that. But just understand that in variables in Python, especially if you come from another language, in another language, uh, there's no uh, thing that locks it to be a certain data type. A, a variable can be reused over and over. The only thing that's a restriction in Python is really just your um, a restricted word or reserved words. Uh, and the benefits of this, there is benefits of dynamically typing. It allows a lot more flexibility and allows you to develop and prototype a lot quickly in Python, right? For example, I can make a variable called a temp and that temp can evolve, develop and evolve as I'm coding and move along. And I can discover the temp later and so on and so forth. When we get to uh, more structural development, we will talk about such thing as there are different types of variables, uh, which what I mean is not by uh, the data type, but by where these variables live. And we'll go into that more later when we get to the structural version of Python program. So let's get the hands up and make some variables. This is pretty similar to the type thing. We can see how both of these will play hand in hand and go along. Uh, so for example, now I'm in the interpreter well, that you should be able to see. Oh, oops, I accidentally disabled it. There you go. Uh, so for example, I'm gonna do a clear. Oh, I forgot this is nothing. I can't just clear. I'm gonna, I think I can toss it right here. Trash it, that's not clearing it. Um, so for example, I can now create a variable called um, age. Hello, computer. Okay, cool. Age, and I'm gonna use equal. Equal is assignment. We'll go over operators later. But equal is a type of what we call assignment operator. It allows you to do something. And so I'm gonna assign, let's say, uh, the word, um, I mean, the number 90 to age, right? And now let's say we are wondering what type of data is stored in age. Um, Cause essentially right now, 
uh, age is now pointing to a specific memory location that we keep track of. And we just put a 90 in that memory location. And then age is just reference to it. That's why people really care about computer science. If you don't care about it, just think of 90 is stored in age. That's all you got to think of. And then if let's say I want to know what type of data type age is, I would just do type, which we learned about um, earlier, and I will give it age. And you can enter, it will say age is the type integer. And if you come from another language that are better, more strict, that does not have dynamic, uh, um, dynamic typing, um, you wouldn't be able to do this. But I can do this because I'm in Python, kind of like the Wild West, where I can now, let's say, I want age to be... be, be actually a string so i can just do quotes throwing a string and enter and then now if i do type on age it just became a string and the, again this is allowed because python uh, as a language allows dynamically typing um and you can see you can also uh do a lot more other things right so we're gonna make a few variables that i just made a string for you that sent it to age which makes no sense i'm going to turn it back to a number um I'm going to do different things. And uh, what's really cool is uh, because normally, let's say when you're typing in a file, that data is stored. Uh, and when you have an in interpreter instance like this, you can also just hit age. It is also stored by the interpreter. So let's say age is now 54. And we know age 54 is a, uh, is a type of integer, right? So if I do 54, it says it's an int. And if I do type age, what it's doing is essentially it's going to where age, check what's stored in it and give them the type of that, which is essentially just the same thing as um, if you want to think about how the computer is processing it, all it's doing is saying type, oh, I see a variable, it's age. Okay, I want to replace the variable with what the value of that variable is. And then we'll go to memory, grab the value, throw it into the function type, evaluate it. So those two give us the same thing. So uh, for example, if I want to do an expression, which we'll go over what expressions are later, but it's still understandable. It's that I want to do age is equal equal to. Equal equal to is a comparison that's saying they are the same uh, to 54. It will say true, which is a Boolean right there. As you can see how this is starting to come together a bit. We'll go more in depth later. Um, you can also, if I do ages, go to 50 equal equal to 55, it's saying false because that's not true. Um, but yeah, that is how you would create variables in Python. Uh, and actually, I'm going to bring over uh, this, so I can open, let's say, main. So if you if you were working a file instead, you could do the same thing. You can do age is equal to 54. You can do uh, name is equal to a string, right? So I can do name is equal to string Kevin. Um, uh, there's also things uh, outside of that we call reserved word, right? So for example, I say true is a reserved word which is how you can see it, it highlights it as a different color. With blue, if I try to set true to something, uh, you will, it would not be allowed because true is a reserved word. I love audience explanation because I can always explain it and someone can always explain it better. Uh, so let's look at what audience says. So someone from chat said, variable is like a cup. Uh, let's uh, first, let's fill the cup of coffee where coffee is value uh, that assigned to the variable, which is the cup. We can replace coffee with another drink in the cup, the same way we can replace value which is assigned to the cup. There you go. That's a decent um, analogy way of explaining it. Uh, I do want to mention, uh, if it, let's say this cup is meant for drinks and maybe another a language, the cup will only always hold drinks. That's like your data type that we, you defined when you made that value, right? So cup, I, and if I made the rule, when I made the cups, the cup can only hold drinks. Uh, but if I'm in Python, cups can hold pens as well as drinks. And those are just, and there's, it's the wild west where cuff can hold anything as long as it fits um, in it. But yeah, uh, thank you for the audience definition. But yeah, so this is some things with variable. We're going to go back to our slide and progress from here. I'm going to check our time and we're still really good on time. So a next basic Python concept we're going to go over is called operators. And you might ask, what are operators? Well, let's find out. So operators are special symbols, we're also reserved characters uh, that are used to perform different types of operations on values and variables. Uh, so the supported types of operators are a wide range in Python. We have things called, uh, are, 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 oh, I cannot say this word right now, um, arithmetic, assignment, comparison, logical, bitwise, membership, and identity operators. Those are the different classes or different types of operators. I need to find better words because type and class um, are so used in computer science. There are different groups or categories 
of operators. The first category we're going to look at, or in depth, we're going to call it um, arithmetic. There we go. That's the English word. Oh, arithmetic operators, which are used to perform various mathematical calculations, such as addition, uh, where you can use the normal plus sign. You're all used to, to add two operands together. You can use subtraction, which uh, you're, you, you're pretty used to. It's the simple minus sign, right? It allows you to subtract two things together. So it takes the first thing that's given, subtract it, uh, take the second thing, subtract it from the first thing, where the first thing is subtracted by the second thing. You have multiplication, which is your um, asterisk, uh, your star. I don't know what people, what else other people call it. And it just multiplies those two uh, things provided together. You have division. Also, operand is essentially it's just a uh, part of the the expression, right? So uh, you have two operands when you use addition, right? You have a, a number and another number. You add them together. Um, subtraction, same dealio. Um, multiplication, yeah, operands. Uh, and then division. We have a few types of divisions in actual programming. Or in mathematics, I guess as well. Uh, but in programming, we have your regular division, which is just a bad way. I can never do forward slash and slash properly. That is a forward slash. <laughs> uh, your regular one, one forward slash will then divide your two, the first operand by the second operand and return it as a float, which means it includes the fu the fractional components. Floor division essentially divides. You use two forward slashes. It then divides uh, the first operand by the second and returns the integer part. Right? It's been floored or rounded down. So, for example, if I divide. Uh, if I divide two by, uh, I mean, if I divide one by two, uh, th if I use regular division, you'll get 0.5, right? It's half of one is 0.5. If you use floor division, what happens is you'll get 0.5, but floor will always just floor it down, which means it will round down. So 0.5 becomes zero. So if I did uh, one divided by two in floor division with two forward slashes, you get zero. If I did one divided by two with regular division, uh, you'll get 0.5. Um, our next concept is called modulus. This is actually really important in mathematics, in computer science, in any in many fields, because it's a way to approach numbers and it, it, it works with uh, properties and numbers and it's really important. Uh, so what it returns is the remainder of the division from the first operand by the second. We'll, we'll play around with this in the interpreter, don't worry. But what essentially is saying is it returns the remainder, right? So for example, if I did, uh, uh, two divided by one. Uh, wait, that's not a good example. I'm gonna toss that. Forget I said that. So if I did, let's say, uh, uh, five divided by three, right? Uh, five divided by three, the whole number of it is just one. The fraction component is uh, five divided by three. The fraction component is two over three, right? Uh, I should probably write this out. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna actually bring this up real. Uh, just so everyone can see, right? So uh, if I did um, five divided by three, which I do in this in Python style, uh, which you essentially, the whole number you get is you get one and the fractional component you get with it is technically two divided by three. What what uh, modulus do, which is the operator that looks like this, is that it will disregard uh, the beginning component and it won't give you the divide by three, right? Cause you can just figure that out. It just gives you the remainder. The remainder is two, right? A uh, five divided by three, the remainder gets two. And we know it's two divided by three is what we want, but the remainder is two, right? What, what you would do is then you would do five divided by well, well, five mod three is what you would get. So for example, I'm going to write down all the division stuff. Why minus all? So five divided by three, I'm going to do two because uh, two is a lot easier to math. But five divided by two, if we use regular uh, one forward slash division, you'll get that to be, I'm gonna use equal cool as a comparison, right? I'm gonna, you get that to be 2.5. If I were to use floor division, which if I do five divide, divide by two, which is also known as uh, floor division, uh, this will be equal to two. If I did modulus division, we'll want the remainder instead. Uh, and the remainder of five mod two is, uh, is equal to one, right? Because it's one over two is what 0.5 is. So uh, equal, equal, right? So those are the three types of divisions you we are you're going to be working with. Let's head back over to our slides. Okay, cool. So that is modulus. Then we have something such as exponentation, which is exponent, which is raises the power, right? That's pretty common in math. So it's like two squared, right? You just do two 
squared or two to a thing, you're just working up exponent, so you just use star star. So you use the first number, star star, wherever your exponent is going to be. So let's play around with some of these operations. If I hit the next slide, you'll see what we're, we're gonna do is, let's get some hands-on experience with, uh, 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 oh, I hate this word, um, arithmetic operators, er arithmetic, there we go, arithmetic operators, there we go, okay, cool. So I'm gonna hop up back over to our actual uh, shell interpreter and thing in Python. I'm gonna go back to the shell and then we're gonna do a few mathematical things. So we're gonna first clear it by hitting this trash can in the top corner. So what I'm gonna do is let's say, I am going to do one plus one. I hope everyone knows the answer to that. You see path code, so it's two. I can do two uh, plus three, it's five. Uh, let's do some division like uh, what we talked about right uh so let's do let's just subtract it first right we know that four minus two is uh two uh we know that four times two is eight so we know that four divided by two do we know what four divided by two is i hope you do it's two if i use my example right you see it turned to float because uh, it uh because regular division keep track of both the whole number as well as the fraction component. So let's do five divided by two. You can see this float is 2.5. If I do five divide divide, which is just flow division, which will basically give you the whole number, but not the remainder. Well, you, uh, some people also call it um, uh, integer division because you only get the whole entire integer. So if I do five divided by two, you'll just get two because the integer was 2.5, but you want only the integer component. And you want to drop uh, the float uh, or the uh, fractional component, so you just get two. Then we have modulus division, which kind of showed earlier, which will essentially say, okay, I don't actually care about the integer part, I want the fractional part, but I just want the fractional remaining. So if I did uh, five mod two, it's saying how many times two can go into five? It goes to five twice, which means the remainder is one. There we go. Uh, and then the next thing where we looked at was, um, oopsie daisies, is uh, expert uh, X, Exponentation or exponentation, exponentation, exponentiation. Oh, English is great, but just exponents, right? So, for example, your common things like two squared is four, a three squared is nine. You can also do other things. So, if I do like uh, two to the third, which everyone should know as in computer science, right? Oh, uh, wait, yes. Uh, oops, I did two times. That's why I was like, wait, these numbers aren't working because I'm saying the right answer, but look at the wrong thing. It's two stars, right? So let me redo that. Two star star two, there you get four. Two times two happen to be four, two. Three star star two, you get nine, right? And then if I do uh, two star star three, which you should know as a computer science because um, that's how binary works. If you're not in computer science, it's okay. Uh, but two star star three, which is a two cube, is going to be eight, right? And then if you do two to the four, it's going to be 16, 32. And if you guys watched the previous stream where they, uh, I think it was two streams ago, they were making uh, 2048. Uh, it's just 2048 is, did anyone know what 2048 is? Is how many, two to the how many power? Uh, if two to the 16th minute just double each time, so you just have to count the number of blocks you join together to get 2048. Uh, so if you do 2 to the 8, it's 256, so you just need uh, another, what, 4 more joins? So essentially it would be 2 to the 12 is uh, 496. Oops, I went one too long. So 2 to 11 is uh, 2048, which is a good game to build during a uh, game month. But yeah, any questions on uh, our, uh, math operators? I'm going to call it that. If not, we're going to do some more complex examples of math operation, which is really important. And if you are have not taken math in a while, um, I hope you don't forget this stuff. No questions? Okay, cool. We're gonna do some more complex versions of what we kind of just did which is building out complex um, expressions. Wait. Oh, okay. So um, actually, I might have made a tiny boo-boo, um, but we're going to go over expressions. It's okay. Uh, I actually finished writing the slide. I'm just trying to see if I finished writing some of the slides. Yeah, I messed up. 
Well, I guess it's because I want to type operators first and go over expressions. That's fine. Okay, cool. So let's build out some some complex or or uh, arithmetic portions, right? So just like in your regular math in Python, we have pandas. Uh, does anyone remember what pandas is? If you don't, <laughs> it'd be pretty unfortunate. Uh, but pandas is just a mathematical concept that tells you how things go in order, and that mathematical co concept holds in Python. So, for example, four, five divided by five. Oh, there goes my camera. That's okay. We don't need my camera. No one needs to see me. We do this. Uh, according to pandas, this answer. If you don't, if you don't know how pandas works, then that might be a whole nother problem. Uh, we can explore. But uh, according to pandas, this is three point uh, seven point zero, right? And the reason for that is because um, how Python works is whenever you introduce a, a specific operation that is coordinated with a specific data type, it will convert the whole entire answer to that data data type to it, right? So. Um, for example, we did five divided by five, which is the thing that happens if you do if you know your normal math operation, right? It's it goes uh, multiplication, division, addition, uh, multiplication, division, one level, addition, subtraction is one level, right? So the the breakdown of the, of the whole thing, right, with all the operators we've learned, right, is going to be exponential at the top. Uh, follow, oops, exponent. I'm gonna do comments. You can do comments by using triple quotes in Python. So I'm gonna make, I'm making a comment here, and you can end the comment. Use triple quotes again. I'm actually gonna end it real quick. I don't want. That's not how I wanted to look. I'm gonna clear that. I'm gonna do triple quote. Hit enter. I'm gonna start writing some comments so everyone understands. So the top of the train. This is the highest. Highest in pan. I forgot. Is it how you spell it? I don't know. It's like a what? Um. Parenthesis mod pam pan multiplication no pan what is it I forgot how you spell it parenthesis it's multiplication division addition transfer so so this is definitely like addition multiplication division addition subtraction I'm missing something exponential I think it's it used to just be pan okay whatever I can't remember but long story short we'll write it out in order right so actually the highest is not this. Uh, you, if you put anything in parentheses, it works the same way in mathematical operation. That's the highest. If someone remembers, uh, oh, please excuse my dear and tally. Yes, there we go. Thank you. Um, that's a great one. I forgot that little thing. Hey, I haven't taken regular like math like that in so long. Uh, okay, cool. So uh, parentheses is the highest, including in Python. Following that, we have exponents, which is our double star operator. Following that, we have our multiplication, a single star operator. And following that, we have our division. Oh, that one, I should probably make this true to its word. So I'm actually gonna clear this again because I messed up. Um, I'm actually gonna close this comment out first. Oops, I did too many. I'm gonna clear this. I'm gonna start over because I'm a moron for that. Uh, don't mind me. So first thing we have parentheses, right? That's the highest of the highest. Highest, H-I-J-G-S-T. And then I'm gonna put, uh, Highest. What was it gonna do? Wait. Hi. Oh, pandas. Uh, please excuse my dear aunt Sally. That's a good one. I love that. Um, and then uh, the next thing is exponents on their own class. Uh, and then if you don't know, exponents is its own class. But following that, multiplication, division are one class, which means for us, one star. Uh, I'm gonna use this line. One star. Or actually, it's commas. One star plus division plus our multiple versions of division are all on one line and after that we have our addition subtraction so that is just your regular plus and your regular minus uh, so this is how mathematically uh, python is programmed to evaluate your operations right um hi welcome to the stream good morning thank you for joining us uh we are currently learning python and breaking into our, our Oh, fuck, English. Arithmetic operators. There we go. Sound it out. It's okay. No, it's okay. Um, This is going to be a three track, what, three part track. I'm actually going to go off a second. Oops, you daisy. Uh, let me go off. Okay, cool. 
So uh, everything is fixed now. Uh, I need to throw on my background just in case there's anything in the background, but it's okay. It's super blurry. You couldn't even tell. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're just learning basic Python. It's okay if you missed a lot of this. This will be recorded. You can watch it later at your own leisure and your own pace. Um, but yeah, actually, uh, you guys might, might not even caught anything because I think I, I, I was blocked. But yeah, uh, feel free to go at your own leisure, your own pace, uh, and then come back for part two and three. Where we will continue to dive into Python with part three being um, hopefully building your tools and arsenal enough to write your own simple uh, uh, command line based game. But from there, uh, let's continue. Um, we're currently talking about mathematical operations, just to catch you up where we are. So for example, if I in Python write this uh, mathematical equation, five plus one divided by four times seven to the second power, right? What this will, how Python, which how humans should be the same way human evaluates this, which is the first thing it will do is, oh, parentheses in here. So it first do five plus one, which will be six, and then goes, oh, now parentheses taking over, we replace off six. So it's now six divided by four uh, times seven to the sec, uh, to the second power, which will do exponents next, which we will leave the six alone there. It will do seven to the second power, which we know seven squared is, I hope you know what seven squared is. It's 49. So this what will happen here will be it will, it will be six divided by four times 49, which is a huge number. And then it will do uh and because you might want to do four times 49 first, but remember it's mathematical operation in multiplication and division on the same line. So it actually does six divided by four first, then it multiplies by 49. So six divided by four. I wish I can do math. Six divided by four is what? Six is one point five. Uh, so six divided by four. Yeah, it's 1.5. I'm not crazy. If someone, if I'm wrong, please correct me. It's 1.5, then 1.5 times 49. And whatever 1.5 times 49, it's essentially just 49 plus half of itself, which is 49 plus 20 point, uh, 20, what, uh, 49, uh, it's 24.5. So it's 49 plus 20, uh, 4.5, whatever. Math the rest. I'm going to hit enter. There you go. It's 73.5. I could math, I definitely cannot math. Uh, yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna drop this replit link. So um, here's the link to the replit. Uh, again, we, we showed how you set it up. If you wanna go back and rewatch that, please do so. Um, but yeah. So that's an example of how pa pa uh, pandas and mathematical operations still matter in Python. Uh, we are going to, uh, I think this should be built in. We're gonna take a break for a second. Let me go fill up my water. I'll be back in like a second. Please don't leave. Um, and then after that, we're going to do a lot of Q and A's. You can feel free to ask about anything. Um, and then we will most likely call it a day from there and we'll pick up the rest. Actually, I lied. There's, uh, one more thing I want to get into, which is expressions. And then after expressions, um, we'll go back and do the rest of the operation. The reason why I'm going to expressions first, um, is that it matters for something else, but we'll probably end with expressions today, but I'll be right back for this break. So please stick around. Don't disappear on me. I'll be right back. Okay, I know that wasn't a really long break, but we are back. I first want to do is make sure who just joined us are have checked in. Um, you do are eligible for prizes, raffles, etc. And uh, we always change up what we're offering. But uh, so make sure you check to keep that on record that you attended. We're here, learn some amazing new stuff. I'm going to drop the check-in link for everyone once again. Uh, please make sure to check in if you have not done so. Um, but yeah. Uh, from there, we're going to go into expressions and we're going to do Q and A for any question and answer. And then we'll probably call it a night for part one and part two will pick up with the rest of the operators. And then we're going to start to be able to actually write some code, right? You want to understand data type, you can understand operator, you want to understand values and so much more. It's going to be so fun. Um, yes, we're also going to look at control structure, logic flow and all that. And this is a pretty in-depth um, workshop on Python. 
Uh, it's probably some of the stuff you love this. If you've ever taken an actual university or uni or college level course, you'll do that. When is part two? Um, again, if you missed most part one, you, you are more than welcome to watch the recording. It's going to be up on Twitch as well as YouTube, I'm pretty sure, as well as Facebook. And part two, if you give me one second, I will tell you as I check my calendar because I don't recall when part two has been scheduled in. Um, part two, learning with Python at a academic level course in my opinion um i'm trying to do it as detailed for you to continue this computer science or programming if you like uh it's gonna happen oh uh, let's see it's gonna happen here uh, it's gonna be happen at 8 p.m eastern standard time and I'm trying to get the day of the week. I hate how the schedule is laid out. Um, it's going to be Thursday, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you don't know, Thursday, the date is going to be, they don't put it. I love that fact they don't put it. Let me click on my calendar. Um, so part two is going to be occurring on, wait, wait, calendar, please. No, my computer calendar doesn't want to work. Let me shut this on. Yeah. Okay. It works. Uh, part two is going to be occurring Thursday the 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, please use that to convert it to whatever time you're in. There'll be announcement. Everything will continue where we left off. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to go over expressions. Uh, so what are expressions? Uh, expressions are a combination of values and variables, uh, operators, and function calls that evaluate to a single value. Um, so an expression, uh, can be used, uh, can be a single, uh, value or simple value or it can be more complex, right? So expression could just be the number one. That's technically expression. And zero one is expression or it can be what we just built out here, uh, in this actual coding example, uh, this thing would be considered expression that evaluates to a single value, which is our answer, which is in the form of a float or a floating point number. Also known as decimal or whatever you want to call it. Uh, also, expressions are used extensively in Python. That's essentially what the whole thing is built on, and it forms the basis of many Python statements in construction, right? So, for example, the number we built, anything that uses values, variables, operators, which one of the we went over is the uh, aromatic operators, and we're going to go with other operators as well, will help you build expressions. And some of the key things to understand is um, in interactive mode, which is what, I'm, what I have, which when you're working with the uh, Pythons, REPL, which alerts also it's repo, but it's it's not it's not meant to, it does it is mean for the same thing. Where it's read, evaluate, print, loop shell, which means you can keep reading, evaluate, and looping, uh, which is also you can also call an interpreter. Um, it is what we're kind of using right now to learn the language. So I'll throw that in there. And expressions uh, that allows efficient expression to be entered directly, which is what I just did. Right, I showed you that number that was the expression entered directly into the shell, and you can get the results immediately where the interpreter then process it, or Python is about, process it, and then throw it back out at you. Or to throw the answer back out at you, or the evaluation of the expression. Yeah. And then uh, expression must always be on the right-hand side of the assignment operator, which we did go over. Uh, so uh, that means, I'm going to actually pop it back over here, right? When we assign variables, we went over. So you have something called left-hand side and right-hand side. And let's, uh, I'm going to put a question mark here, question mark to the operator. So what happened is for expressions, where expression always has to be on this right-hand side, uh, and it can never be on the left-hand side. And operators go in between here. And again, expression could be made of operators plus values plus variables. So what this essentially means is uh, if I generate, let's say, a, a variable called um, age and it's equal to 54, uh, the expression, right, is 54. This is a simple expression. The operator here is equal. Uh, but then the left hand side is age. Uh, so I can make this expression more complex by making this, let's say, a mathematical formula, right? I can do then I can do a uh, uh, minus uh, that to the 50, whatever power uh, mod by five, four divided by two times six. And what happened is this whole expression will be evaluated and stored into age. So this is a complex expression, which we see the answer is apparently uh, 203,900, uh, 203, well, 203,940, uh, that's it, integers, we're age. That's what I am. I'm uh, 203,000 years old. 
but yeah, so that's an example of complex expression in some work. And that's important uh, because the whole entire Python language, when most actual languages are found on utilizing expressions to evaluate a single value, and that value then can be assigned to things such as variables. Um, and expression, again, are built on uh, values. You can be built with values, variables, operators, and function calls. And with that, I think oh, we did already get handled of expression. Uh, let's do take some questions, Q&A. It could be about this topic. It doesn't have to be about this topic. It could be about anything. Uh, we're going to take a break and we'll answer any questions for the day. And then um, you guys move on to the next stream coming up. And um, if you want to come back for part two, uh, that will be again happening on Thursday the 4th uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Any questions from chat? Feel free to ask honestly anything you would like. No questions. Chats are all great, amazing. No one has any questions whatsoever. See, I come to the realization. I always think um, when streaming, I need audio as well. I don't because you guys can't talk to me. <laughs> you guys can only type to me. Uh, so <laughs> wearing headphones are pretty pointless. Um, but I guess I can like also listen to some music or like whatever you guys are listening to right now. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I guess if no one has any question, no question, question. No, for sure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and please do come back for part two of this track, which is Learning Together Python 101 happening Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, yeah, the fourth. I hope to see everyone who attended here there, and we'll continue building on what we've learned. But for people who are here now, please don't, uh, you can take a break, but we will be, please stick around for our No Light event, which is a super fun mini event where we run. Uh, it's called No Light, where you essentially learn about how, I guess, uh, how uh, how HTML code or website coding kind of works. It's a, a really fun uh, mini event called No Light. Uh, and then let me write this out really quick. Uh, no Light mini event happening at uh, 12 a.m. EST coming up in around 30 minutes. I'm gonna hit save. And that's, there we go. So now you can see that comment. So um, again, stick around for no light. You get the joke there. We use the the explanation point, which in, in most languages, as well as in computer science and a lot of mathematics means not, right? So no light, haha, <laughs> not light. <laughs> no light uh, mini event again at 12 a.m. EST, which is occurring uh, in 30 minutes from now. Uh, stick around for some mini event, have fun some, learn some basics of um, how HTML websites work, and maybe, I can't guarantee this, but um, some of our mini events, we do do giveaways, so do show up and see if we're doing those. Those are pretty cool. With that being said, I hope everyone have a wonderful rest of your night. So if you have no questions, and I will see you uh, either at the next stream I'm running, which is not part two, but I will see you at least at uh, Learning Together Python 101 part two happening again. It's going to be happening May 4th at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everyone, make sure you take a break. Enjoy yourself. Have a good night. Take care. Have a good night. See ya, uh, Tokyo Mango. I will not pronounce everyone's name. But yes, have a good night. Enjoy. Stick around. For no light.